Tonight's County Council meeting was for July 16th and it was our first County Council meeting of the month due to us um, having one that was canceled or postponed basically at earlier in the month uh, due to July 4th. So this meeting we, we kicked off early at 6 o'clock because we honored um, a church in Honeypath, Honeypath First Baptist Church, on their 150th anniversary. So uh, a remarkable group of people down there who've been making an impact in the community for a long time. And then we went into our normal county council session at um, 6.30. And we started with third reading, like we always do, and we had a couple of things that came up, and that was the benefit plans um, for the county employees and adjusting an ordinance there to make it correct. And then also it was the third reading on what we called summer adjustments. And that's something we've been talking about throughout the spring where the billing for water and sewer and how the county interacts with your water company, there's a discrepancy there that we corrected that will um, correct billing for future, but it will also still allow people to fill up their pools once a year and not to get um, adversely affected by that. So, and then from there, um, we went into an economic development um, item that was pretty routine that helped local industry. And then in second reading, we had four items that were very similar in nature. They were all about prohibitions of certain traffic on roads. And, and I get calls about this in my district periodically. People say, hey, why, why is this transfer truck coming down the road? Or, and it tears up the roads or it's causing uh, through traffic that's a nuisance. So we move forward on that. There's a couple of caveats on, uh, I believe one or two of them, where it was only one direction. But uh, in all instances, um, it was where um, through traffic was going through and causing a nuisance and so we want to put a prohibition on that but we also long term want to make sure that we're allowing whatever, whatever industry that those um, trucks are serving to have an alternate route to ultimately get done what they need to get done. From second reading we uh, went into first reading and we adjusted um, ordinances um, in the county in regards to zoning advisory groups. And uh, many folks don't know when something gets rezoned, somebody makes an application to the, uh, the planning department and says, hey, I want to rezone this from residential to a different residential or residential to commercial. Well, the planning department makes a recommendation. That recommendation goes to a zoning advisory group, which is made up of individuals that live in that area. That zoning advisory group then sends it to the planning commission. They vote on it. And then ultimately it ends up in county council's hands. So one of the things we wanted to do was make it easier for zoning advisory groups to meet and to take considerations and how many years um, that those zoning advisory areas would operate. So we streamlined that process because we want citizens to be involved because it's important for us to hear what they have to say, but we don't want to create a, a committee structure that's so cumbersome that uh, people don't want to be involved. So we worked on that. From there, we went into a, a public safety update, and Chairman Graham um, from the Star Iva area um, chairs the Public Safety Committee, and we hit a, a bunch of different items. We still have a committee that's looking at everything related uh, to justice and the jail system because our sheriff's doing a great job. He's, he's tackling the streets and, and making us safer, but what that does, it brings more people into the system. It puts more people um, in, in the jail, it puts more people in, in the system to be handled. So we wanna make sure we're doing that efficiently and that we're bringing all stakeholders to the table so that when we make upgrades to systems or buildings or departments that we're doing so in a way that everybody's working together. Uh, we also talk about radios a good bit. And this was something that was new to me when I came on council is Radios throughout the county are a big deal because you have EMS, you have fire, you have police departments, but not only do you have the county, you have the city. Well, everybody needs to be able to talk on the same radio frequency. Well, that sounds simple enough, but these radios and these systems are complicated. Uh, we enter into multi-year agreements. Uh, for these systems with, with companies like Motorola and ultimately um, people need to have the same equipment so that we can keep folks safe. So tonight... Um, it's important to, to note that 
some people say, what about cell phones? There are lots of places in emergency situations in the county where the cell phones don't work. The signals are not there. Yes. That's why the radio is such a critical piece for EMS and the emergency preparedness people. You don't want the emergency preparedness people to be hamstring um, because of a location in the county or a tower being down or cell service. They need to have immediate back and forth contact to keep us safe. So tonight, um, we um, allocated where the, the city of Anderson was going to get some new radios um, updated to be in conjunction with the county and also our information officer had created a situation with our existing contract where we could save some money on it but still meet those requirements. So that went through the uh, Public Safety Committee and then we had an update on something that is probably, I don't think about it, nobody else necessarily thinks about it, but um, the coroner obviously finds people who have passed away. Well, they don't always have um, a, a private place to take them, so we have a, a morgue agreement with the hospital, and basically that's where the bodies would go until they're processed. So we up that morgue agreement to go multi-years, way into the future, so that we'd always have a place to take care of people who have um, been deceased, and um, that no matter um, who we're operating with, that we'd have capacity and that would work well. Um, also, we talked about EMS. We're going to put a new EMS um, position near the Arthrex in Sandy Springs and also in 3 and 20 um, up toward the Powdersville area. It's just to make sure that we're covered throughout the county so the EMS can respond properly. And then we talked about uh, medical control and that's working with EMS and the hospital and the doctors to make sure people get a standard of care that's consistent throughout the county. One item of note, and I'm glad that the county's doing it, is potentially this fall our EMS director is working on um, a multi-incident drill. And that's like, what if, unfortunately, it's a, it's a reality, but what if a lot of people got hurt at one time? Will our EMS, or our police, or our ER, where all of the different folks that are here to help us, um, where they come together and they practice to make sure that they can coordinate and help us if something like that were to happen. We're used to the routine calls of somebody having a heart attack or a car accident, but if many people were to get hurt at once, we want to make sure that our procedures work and that we're working together. From there, we went into the Finance Committee, which I chair, and we talked about two things. Uh, one is an upgrade we're making to Green Pond Landing. Some questions we had was, we spent a lot of money at Green Pond Landing. What, what's this for? And this was a settlement from the PCB lawsuit that goes back many years of about $650,000 that was coming to the county, and that uh, money can be used on recreation for the lake. Well, that's our number one recreation center. Well, we put um, a, another amount of money on top of that, that's accommodations tax. That's the amount of money that we collect when somebody stays in a hotel. So that's pretty much folks who are coming from outside the county. So we took this settlement money, we took this accommodations tax money from out of county residents, we put it together, we're gonna make Green Pond Landing more um, disability accessible, and at the same time, um, enhance the capabilities for more launching and for dock use out there. So that was a bid that um, we discussed and we and, ultimately approved. And it's been part of phase two. And people might forget that the last time I talked to Neil Paul at Visit Anderson, uh, the best estimates they have on to date of the economic impact of the bass tournaments just at Green Pond have been like $25 million on the community. Yes, those are the um, same numbers that I saw, and it's made a huge impact. And, and in the fishing world and throughout the southeast or even the country, Anderson's on the map. It's sort of, um, I sort of equate it to the, the Southern 500 track that's, you know, down in the, in the low part of the state. That People know what we have here in that regard, and this is part of the, the ongoing plan to enhance it keep folks coming here and um, create better recreation not only for the, the events that come from the outside but the, for the folks that live here in the county. The second item we talked about was a mainly a financial accounting item as a capitalization threshold where we tweaked how we record assets in the county. We went with recommendations that are come from the National um, Government Accounting Advisory Board. So. That's something that probably we've been, we should have been doing for a long time, but we made a decision tonight to, to make that more streamlined and easier. And then we went into executive session about uh, voter registration. 
And we came out with a request to delay a decision. And this ultimately stems from the state is allocating some a pretty big money for everybody to get um, new um, election machines, voting um, machines that we all go to the precincts and use. Well, they'll come down to the county, but then the county has responsibilities to make sure these things work right, to have trained people there, to do maintenance. So what they're trying to basically figure out is who's responsible for what. The county doesn't want to take something without understanding what their responsibility is, but also at the same time we want to meet all the requirements of voters and elections and move it forward. So tonight the council said we've got some more questions, there's some things our legal team wants to, to look at further, and they're going to come back in two weeks and, uh, and we'll look at it again. Right now, there's time for that. There's, we've got time to look. Yeah, we um, we definitely had. That was the big thing. Is we we always want elections to go off without a hitch because they're very important to the public um, confidence that they're done correctly and that they're accessible by everyone and um, that it's done right. And we still have time to work out these contractual items. And our, our team's looking at that. And I I feel fully confident we'll revisit it in the next council meeting and have updates. And then at the end, it's the, it's the beginning of the budget year, so uh, at the beginning of the budget year, there's, there's more money in the pot, and so uh, we had requests from all the different council members for all the different groups around the county who are, and they're doing work um, helping from homeless people to, to widows to um, um, youth track events to recreation events, you name it, um, arts events. Um, uh, where different allocations were made by different council members. And then, as always, we end with um, public comment where we, ch we had one that was a litter comment um, talking about what a great job our litter control had been doing through the county, at least in her area. And then everybody just spoke um, briefly about uh, what was going on that was of interest to an individual council person. And that basically ended the night. So it was a routine meeting. It was a um, for um, a midsummer meeting, uh, it went pretty quickly, and we fully expect to, to go into uh, more items going into the fall. One thing of note, Chairman Dunn did announce that Belt and Honeypath would be having a town hall on July 23rd. That will be hosted by the council members um, that are adjacent to that area or, or, um, or represent that area. One of the things of note will be they will be talking about the car fee. Um, they'll, they'll also be talking about other things um, that are of county interest. So, you know, if, if you have any concerns of that nature, you know, please uh, make um, plans to attend that. And, and as always, you know, staff and council members always look forward to everyone's um, input. So feel free to text, email, call, or attend the next meeting. <laughs>